crown and flame the mountains of man. Cockstock! Tell me what you want! Go back to the Sodom from which you came! Elizabeth! Bring us the girl and wipe away the debt. Hey! Hey, the deal's off, you hear me? The deal's off! Bioshock Infinite could make you feel uncomfortable. The game explores how religious and racial extremism change our lives and our cultures. It shows you how a single small decision can alter reality forever. But no matter how closely these themes hit home, you won't forget Bioshock Infinite once you play it. Not its challenging themes, its mind-blowing final minutes, or the fun and fluid gameplay that makes this adventure all the more exciting. Excuse me, it's Booker DeWitt. It all begins with a mystery. As former private investigator Booker DeWitt, you've been hired to find a girl, though the game leaves who she is a riddle, at least at first. You seek her in a city in the sky called Columbia, a hyper-nationalist 1912 metropolis. It's a tremendous place covered with fluttering red, white, and blue flags and filled with classical architecture that immediately evokes turn-of-the-century America. The presence of airships and clockwork enemies, however, coat Columbia with a steampunk sheen. It isn't just the buildings of Columbia that are lily white. It's also the racial structure. Please, what are you doing? Come on, are you gonna throw it? Are you taking your coffee black these days? At a key moment, you confront the gut-wrenching reality of the city's white supremacy. You also confront one of Bioshock Infinite's many core mysteries. What's up with the brand on Booker's hand? It's the mark of the false prophet, the enemy of Columbia's religious and political leader, Father Comstock. Booker is targeted as an antichrist of sorts and has no choice but to run. And so the American dream turns to nightmare, though you eventually find the girl you seek. Her name is Elizabeth, and she's locked in a floating tower where she's protected by a monstrous mechanical creature called Songbird. Your first time coming face to face with Songbird is frightening and memorable, and Elizabeth's relationship with her protector is a complicated one. So is her relationship with Booker, actually but she needs him if she wants to escape her Colombian prison and head to Paris, the city of her dreams. The two make their attempted escape, exploring Colombia's nooks and allying with a resistance force out of necessity. Comstock is the god of the white man, the rich man, the pitiless man. But if you believe in common folk, then join the Fox. Columbia isn't as dark and hushed as Bioshock's Rapture, but investigating it is still tense. You watch a social order implode before your very eyes, and as the story darkens, so too do the places you investigate. And when the story makes you question the very essence of your reality, environments become increasingly bizarre. Enlightenment comes by way of audio recordings you discover called Voxophones. What's a Voxophone? What's a Voxophone? There are clues here to the nature of Elizabeth's special gift, which is her ability to open tears in space-time and peer into other times and places. Voxophones also provide insight into Comstock's wife, Mother of Columbia, a deeply troubled martyr figure in this deeply troubled and profound fictional world. Bioshock Infinite is a first-person shooter, but you aren't armed with just machine guns, pistols, and so on. Those are Vigors I'm talking about! 
You also get to play with Vigors, which are biokinetic powers that you can fling at your enemies to assist in combat. You can weaken your enemies by throwing fire at them or turning them against their comrades. Try distracting them with a murder of crows before shooting them in the face with a carbine. Or try charging into them at great speed and then following up with a shotgun blast. This being a Bioshock game, you loot corpses and objects for ammo and currency, and upgrade your powers and weapons to become even more dangerous. Many of your foes are cleverly designed. George Washington automatons plod towards you, and agile mechanical heavies dog you as you try to escape. You can get the drop on your enemies by utilizing the Skyline Railway system. With the press of a button, you can latch onto a rail with your hook and coast from one floating platform to another. You can leap from a rail and onto a soldier, slice them up with your hook, and then grind upwards and onto the deck of a floating airship. It's thrilling and rewarding to fire weapons and zap electricity as you zip around the rails. Elizabeth is usually at your side throughout, tossing health packs your way, along with salts, which you need to power your vigors. She's a great companion for the most part. Elizabeth might not make it into an elevator with you, forcing you into a one-sided conversation, but moments like that are rare. More importantly, Elizabeth can access tears during battle, pulling in objects like floating turrets and crates of health packs. These objects look like they're covered with TV static, and you can bring them into being by holding a button. And thus, an engaging combat system becomes even more unpredictable. Once the finale comes, you will want to play Bioshock Infinite again. The story takes on new meaning once you play it, knowing that which you can never unknow. Bioshock is more than escapist entertainment. Columbia might be a stunning place to be, but it's a disturbing one that scrutinizes some of humanity's greatest contradictions and atrocities. Was yellow skin and slanted eyes that did betray us with their lies until they crossed the righteous path of our...